Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. I think uh, this is uh, not what Suven uh, keeps talking about. This is the intraoperative iris trauma. It's just not a correct description of the presentation, but this is a fairly uh, common scenario in Gujarat with a lot of diabetics around. And uh, things are going pretty smoothly, and uh, hydro dissection is important, as uh, was told previously. Uh, you need to have uh, your way of doing it, subcapsular. But when you introduce the cannula and when you take it out, you need to be careful. And this eye had a shallow chamber. Notice that. Can I pause it? OK. Can I do it for that side? All right. Now I do again, which was not necessary, actually. Can I be there, uh, Ram? Uh, dear Ram, Sorry? there and pause it myself? Yeah, go ahead. That's only for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to pause it here. Right, okay. So I think, uh, see that the cannula touched the sub iris? Nobody noticed, actually. But that, that little thing was, uh, again, more fluid. And it, it, you saw the peak there. You saw the peak of the iris coming, the little trauma. The first thing you want to do is to resistance is The first reflex is to push from the main incision why the spatula or a cannula or a visco or something and push it back. Do not do that. Do not go to the main incision. Second, it would be, and I'll keep showing you my mistake, go from the side port with the spatula and swipe. Try not to do that. Best thing is to inject viscote or a methyl cellulose, a dispersive one or a cohesive, on the iris. But the surgeon struggled here because the other hand did not stabilize the globe. So. In fact, the viscoat didn't go in top of the iris all the time. It went underneath also, so it didn't help very much. But that is a way to do it, and I'll show you the correct way later on. Once again, excessive viscoat was done, and then that thing which I normally would not do it uh, was done, and that's because it was caught into the incision. So iris trauma initiated by the entry of the cannula over hydros fluid, over viscoat, and now the metal spatula. Four times the iris has been traumatized already. Once again, trying to introduce doesn't work. So you come out, again, mistake, never inject from the main part. The surgeon did it again from the never, from that. What happens here is that the viscose then goes more here than rather than here. So the pressure behind the posterior chamber from here, uh, behind the iris, will increase. And it will just negate the very thing uh, that you are trying to avoid. Once again, the picking of the pupil from that uh, side port here, you notice it? So this is fairly familiar situation. This is the way to do it. Inject viscose on top of the thing and stabilize the globe with the other hand if, you're, if that is not there. And now things are good. Inject again on the side port, underneath the side port without touching it. The viscose will do the job. And now things are OK, I feel. But once again, uh, it can go and constrict more. In spite of my low IOP, I had a <coughs> for 28 centimeter, 30 centimeter bottle height, very low eye aspiration, but still the pupil kept on constricting. And that's because the dense fragments come in vicinity of the sphincter. You have a question? Yeah. I mean, do you think uh, you are using IOP of 28 stages and then 30? Do you think when the pupil is coming down like this, pressurizing the eyeball, increasing the IOP will help to keep the pupil a little dilated? I think it's a very, very important question. And I, I didn't understand for several years. We all feel uh, that the raising the bottle height will have a dilating effect on the pupil and vice versa. But unfortunately, it had very little, if, if at all, any effect on the dilatation. So actually raising the pressure, what does it, or fluid uh, more, Fluid goes behind the iris, and it actually pushes more towards the incision. So resist raising the bottle height too much with the concept that it will dilate the pupil. So I would suggest low bottle height of 30. I'm using 30 or 40 centimeter bottle height, but not more than 50 centimeter bottle height, generally speaking. This pupil constricted partly because of these fragments uh, coming in vicinity, and already the trauma was sufficient uh, that the further turbulence uh, constricted the pupil more. So keep the pupil probe in the very center of the eye and, and try to remove that with minimal movement. Now what I'm doing is 
is that I'm injecting adrenaline here because I, am, I, am, I don't give up. Uh, I, I had a retractus ready. I, 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 I remember Suven all the time, but I'm resisting all that. So the adrenaline did help, remember. In spite of this trauma, the adrenaline have, keep in mind, it may work, it's very simple. Now, this uh, removing uh, cortex by manual, of course, but also doing some kind of a step-by-step -step removal uh, where you can have a positioning the aspiration port underneath the anti-capsule, underneath the anti-cortex, occluded it, and then displace it posteriorly so that uh, then it's free of the anti-capsule and then swipe and then aspirate it. Uh, this is an older version of the video we sent, but that, that, that's what it is. Implanting with a small pupil also needs a vertical displacement of the haptic optic junction of the trailing haptic. And uh, you must try to do this. You don't go mad about this procedure, but if you can, go underneath and remove the viscoelastic from behind. Being cohesive, it will come out very soon. And with 40 cc flow rate, it will come up very easy. Uh, uh, would you hydrate the incision? I think it's a good idea to hydrate. You may not need it every time. So this intraoperative trauma to the iris is, is fairly frequent. Make sure that you maintain the gradient of pressure in front of the iris, anterior chamber, and in behind the iris, posterior chamber, be it a fluid, which means excessive bottle height, manage the input. We forget to to change the bottle height. We, we change the flow rate, we change the power, vacuum, but we forgot input. Balancing input and output is the key and always have more pressure in front rather than behind. And excessive viscoelastic, particularly retentive viscoelastic like viscoat, is little to the iris. So one little touch or prolapse is enough to initiate and vitiate all these change of events making it life difficult and difficult, but thank you so very much. Thank well, I, I bribed all of these guys and I promised some dinner tonight, so no <laughs> questions, thank you. No, uh, one, one question, I'm not joining for dinner. <laughs> I, I knew it, <laughs> I knew that. No, when would you go ahead and uh, ask uh, for iris retractors or for some device to dilate the pupil? No, that's what I said, I kept the um, Iris retractors in the uh, in the uh, trolley, and I kept remembering Suven every third minute, but I didn't actually use it. I think uh, it did not even work. If it, had, it, it, if it had not worked, I would have used retractors, drive shaver retractors. Certainly, I would. I, l I use retractors a lot actually, but the Adinani did the trick for me. Any comments, Suhas? You have been very quiet. Well. <coughs> You know, when you have a small pupil intra-op, uh, <coughs> very often a disp uh, what I would do is I would use a dispersive viscoelastic to do uh, uh, viscometriacy. And then, of course, uh, with such low aspiration uh, flow rate and maybe a little less of vacuum, I would still continue with. I think uh, mm, I agree with uh, Abhay. At this stage, if it's manageable, I would still continue, but the only thing different was I would definitely use dispersive to push out because it does wonders. Thank you. So, yes, Kumar. So, every, 